Yo, what is going on guys? Welcome back to another video. So it's Tuesday, which means it's time for our weekly tier list Tuesday. And on Instagram, one of my favorite accounts, Binner Memes, they posted this very interesting tier list, tier listing every single team post expansion, post 1967. So I thought it'd be a fun idea to do it. I had a little bit of differing opinions, although I thought that they still did a very good job. We're going to go through this right now, starting in 1960 or basically 1967 on tier listing every single franchise. We got new tier list, not just going the usual good, great, solid, man, bad. Now nah, we got seven different tier lists this time around. Insane successes. You've had sustained success throughout the decade. Won a shit ton of Stanley Cups. Made a bunch of Stanley Cup finals. Great. You not only had one dynasty run, you won it with like multiple cores. One dynasty. You won like three to four Stanley Cups with one dynasty outside of that. In the last 57 years, you haven't been that good. Uh, cups slash cups and competitive. You won a Stanley Cup or two. And on top of that, you kind of consistently made the playoffs. Cup then man. You got your one cup, then haven't really done much outside of that. No cup, but competitive. You're a consistent playoff team. Despite not winning a Stanley Cup, maybe you made a couple Stanley Cup finals. And then Brutal is like, you never even made a Stanley Cup final and you barely make the playoffs. Like you have like a, a below 50% playoffs rate in your history. So up first, we got the Vancouver Canucks. And I think that they're the definition of no cup, but competitive. They've been a highly competitive team ever since they've been around. You look at it back in 1994, they end up making the Stanley Cup finals with the Pavel Bure core. Then the Sedins keep them very relevant for like 10 to 15 years. And now yet again, they seem like they're going to be a playoff team. I can't project. It's, it's, it's only going on right now, but yet again, Again, they look like they're going to be a competitive playoff team. Going forward, Columbus Blue Jackets, they might be arguably the worst franchise out of anyone that we're going to go through right now. They have, I believe, one playoff series win ever. So that, that's that's not too ideal. And when looking at it, they've made the playoffs below 50% 50, 50 of their season. I think it's close to like 35%. Calgary Flames... I think Cup then meh, won the Cup in 1989. They did make a Stanley Cup Finals back in the early 2000s. But outside of that, they didn't really have another core that had a ton of success outside of that one Stanley Cup run. Jerome McGinley did keep them relevant for a while. You maybe could put them Cup and competitive, but I think for the last... There were 15 years or so. They have been just like, okay. They've had two good seasons out of the last like 15 years. So I'm going to put them in cup then, man. The Tampa Bay Lightning. This is an interesting one because although this is a 57 year period, Tampa Bay Lightning have only been around since 1992, 1993. So I am kind of like prorating it based on what they did in their time and what they've done in their time is great stuff. They've made five Stanley Cup finals in those 30 years. One out of every six years, they make the Stanley Cup final. They won three Stanley Cups. Although, at the start, it's not like the Martin St. Louis core was like dominant every single year making Eastern Conference Finals. They were decent teams. And then since 2015, they have just been amazing with the Stamkos, Hedman, Vasilevsky, and Kucherov core. So I'm going to put them in great. They maybe don't have like the as, as many playoff appearances, Stanley Cup Finals as others that might be in like one dynasty. But I think when you look at the fact that they did it with two different cores is very impressive. The New York Rangers... Cup slash cups and competitive. They were highly competitive back in the 70s with Rod Gilbert. Then Brian Leach era enters. They end up winning a Stanley Cup with him in 1994. Uh, 2000s, Henrik Lundqvist bursts on the scene. They're a playoff team for like a decade. And now the last two out of the last three years, they've made the Eastern Conference Finals. So I think they're definitely cup, cup, cup slash cups and competitive when looking at it they never had like a 10-year period where they were absolutely brutal throughout the 1967 and on montreal canadians this is an easy insane success they've won 10 stanley cups and i think it made like 12 or 13 stanley cup finals i know a lot of that was pre-1980 and i am kind of ever adjusting for this a little bit not, not, not massively so although i don't I, I, I there's gonna be another team with them in that top tier i'll just spoil it right now i don't think that they stand alone because it was pre-1980 but when looking at it the sheer winning sheer amount of legends that they've had on their team since 1967. I think you got to respect them. The St. Louis Blues, I'm going to go cup in competitive. When looking at them, they obviously won the cup in 2019. From the 2010s on, they were a highly, highly competitive team. Before that, did have some down years. But when looking at it, the Chris Pronger in the 2000s wins the goddamn heart. Brett Hull, Bernie Federico. Fed Federico. They, they've been a highly competitive team. It's not like they just lucked into one Stanley Cup. They had multiple cores that could have potentially won a Stanley Cup. So I think you got to put them in cups and competitive. But New York Islanders definitely fit the mold of, of one dynasty. Although the past five or six years, we've had highly competitive teams that made two Eastern Conference Finals. 
It's definitely that one dynasty when you think about the New York uh, New York Islanders. We went from like 1992 to 2016 without winning a single playoff series. So until this current core, I don't think that they are going to do it. But if they win a Stanley Cup, then maybe you can move them up to great. But still, there were there were some dark, dark periods for a New York Islanders fan from the late 90s into the early 2010s. Minnesota Wild. They've been a playoff team for like most of their existence for the most part. I think their playoff percentage is around like 60%. It's actually pretty decent, but they've done nothing with that. They've made, I believe, one Western Conference Finals, have not made a Stanley Cup Final most years. They've just been a first round exit. So I think you got to put them in brutal. The Edmonton Oilers, you could maybe make an argument for great considering they made the Stanley Cup Final in 06. They made it in uh, 2024. I think like in a couple years, I think they are going to win a Stanley Cup with Connor McDavid and then you'd bump them into great. But right now it is more so just one dynasty between 1980, whatever. Well, they won their first one in 1984, but they were a very good team before that. So 1980 to 1989, 19, 1990, Jesus, looking at the Edmonton Oilers, that was their prime run, their one thing that defines their franchise right now until they get one with McDavid and Dreisaitl. I can't really bump them up that much. The LA Kings... If they only had one cup, I might honestly put them in cup then meh from like 1980 to 2010. They well, well, well 19 once Gretzky left to like 2010, they really weren't anything special, but I still think you got to put them in cups in competitive considering they did get those two Stanley Cups, Marcel Dion in the 1970s. They fit the mold of cups in competitive. The Toronto Maple Leafs some people are going to say brutal. I'm going to put him in no cup, but competitor. You look, but competitive. You look at Daryl Sittler in the 1970s. Then they had Doug Gilmore, Matt Sundin. The 2000s were pretty rough, and the early 2010s were really nothing special. But now, the last seven years, eight years, they have been a playoff team. I know they haven't won a lot, but they've been competitive. They're not on the same level of a Columbus Blue Jackets, of a Minnesota Wild, especially when you look. It's not just 21st century. It's before that. I'm going to put them in no cup, but competitive. The Colorado Avalanche, similar to the Tampa Bay they have less cups than these teams, but I think the fact that they've won cups with multiple cores, and even the Nordiques were a pretty competitive team early on before their financial issues. I'm going to put Colorado, I'm going to put Colorado in great. They have had so many legends in multiple cores go through this, and they've, when you prorate it, because obviously they only started back in 1980, I'm going to put them in great. That might be controversial. The Ottawa Senators... The Alfredson teams were very competitive, but I still think overall only one Stanley Cup Finals appearance is pretty below average. I'm going to go with Brutal, and for the last seven or eight years, seven years since 2017, they've kind of been the laughing stock of the NHL. The San Jose Sharks, no cup, but competitive. They started out in like 1994, I believe, and basically from like 2000 to 2019, they were a highly, highly competitive team. Yes, they're blowing it up now, but it's a very intentional blow up compared to the Ottawa. We thought that the rebuild would be over by now. So I think for San Jose, they, they, they had an amazing team for like a full decade that we thought could win the Stanley Cup every single year. So I'm going to put them in no cup, but competitive. The Philadelphia Flyers, cup slash cups and competitive. The 1970s Broadway Bullies were a great team. Won two Stanley Cups. Then you had the Lindros Flyers in the 90s. Giroux, uh, Giroux core kind of in the 2010s. They've been competitive. Yes, they haven't won a Stanley Cup. They have one of the longest droughts in the entire NHL, but they've still been a pretty competitive team. The Dallas Stars... It's, it's tough because I think that once this core is done, I think they could win another Stanley Cup. And I think they're definitely going to move up to cups slash cups in competitive. But I was kind of shocked how the 2010s Sagan and Ben core, I, I maybe I romanticized that a little bit, but they did not have that much success. Yes, they've made back-to-back Stanley uh, Eastern Conference, Western Conference finals, Jesus. But I think I'm going to put them in cups then mad. It hasn't been that good. And it's not like they were amazing when they were the Minnesota North Stars before that. Florida Panthers, you got to go cup then mad because really their core right now. Yes, they made the Stanley Cup finals back in what, like 1996, I believe, but they were brutal for like 20 goddamn years, basically, outside of that. So I'm, I'm going to go with cup then mad, but I think they're obviously going to be a highly competitive team for the next five years. Buffalo Sabres. Yeah, it, maybe it's recency biased, but they, they, they did have decent periods of, of guys like, uh, Perot, uh, LaFontaine, like they have been competitive in the 70s through 90s, even the 2000s. I might put it, it's just been so embarrassing the last 15 years. I'm going to, I'm going to keep them here now. Maybe I'll move them up. The Chicago Blackhawks, it is one dynasty, but they were competitive in the 90s with, uh, 
Jeremy Roenick, Chris Chelios, El- Ed Belfour. They didn't win a Stanley Cup, though, so I think I am just going to put them in one dynasty right now. Stan Mikita was before when they won their Stanley Cups, was before 1967. So I'm going to put them in one dynasty right now. The Boston Bruins, they only have three Stanley Cups, but they have been consistently great, basically, throughout the post-expansion era. They won the two Stanley Cups with Bobby Orr and Phil Esposito. Never won a Stanley Cup with Ray Bork, but they did make a Stanley Cup Finals and were a playoff team basically every single season. Then they get Char and Bergeron, win a Stanley Cup in 2011, and they've never really fallen off the last five years. They've made a Stanley Cup Finals, set the uh, st- uh, the all-time record for the most points in a regular season. So I'm going to go with great for the Boston Bruins, even though they only have three Stanley Cups. Red Wings are kind of one dynasty because Gordie Howe, all that success, Ted Lindsay, Red Kelly was before 1967. They really weren't anything in the 1970s or like the early 1980s. And since the dynasty kind of ended, although the, this dynasty was like 20 goddamn years when looking at how highly competitive they were, it has just been that, if that makes sense. So moving on. Pittsburgh Penguins, I'm going to put them in insane, insane success when looking at their two cores that both won, well, one, 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 they both won at least two Stanley Cups, two in the 90s, and then three with Crosby and Malkin. Yes, early on in the 70s and early 80s, they weren't anything special, but basically from the time that they drafted Mario Lemieux to 2022, the last time they made the playoffs, that was just an absolutely insane run, only marred by like the early 2000s when they missed the playoffs in order to get the future studs of the next generation. So I think when looking at what they did in the more modern post-1985, like 20 plus teams in the league, and then the salary cap era winning three Stanley Cups, I do think that that's on par with the Montreal Canadiens who won eight of their cups pre-1980s when there were 17 teams in the league, no Stanley Cups, and a lot of the top talent in the league were from Quebec. So I think Pittsburgh is definitely maybe below Montreal, but I think they're definitely on the same tier. New Jersey Devils, one dynasty for sure. The Martin Brodeur Devils hasn't been much since then outside of the Taylor Hall season and last season when they made the playoffs. Has not really been much going on in New Jersey of late, just that one dynasty. Washington Capitals, I'm going to go cups and competitive early on. Peter Bondra is a very underrated player, in my opinion. Throughout the 90s, they were a pretty good team. And then once they got Ovechkin, they only won one Stanley Cup, but they were a consistent team, consistent playoff team for basically like 15 years. Highly, highly competitive. The Carolina Hurricanes, although recently they have been very competitive, this is a team, Hartford Whalers, if you include that, weren't really that competitive. They did make a Stanley Cup early on, then eventually win the Stanley Cup in 2006. But from 2000 2006 to like 2018, they were one of the most most irrelevant teams in the entire NHL, and they still haven't even made a Stanley Cup final with this core. So I think I'm going to go Cups then Meh. Anaheim Ducks are are kind of in the same boat. They did have a, like a very good run from Paul Correa all the way to Ryan Getzlaff from like 2002 to 2000 or 2003 to like 2018. But outside of that, it wasn't anything special. <sighs> You could go cup slash competitive, but like early on, they were very bad. And recently it's been very bad. So I think I'm going to put them in cup then meh as of right now, although they did have multiple years of making the playoffs. Nashville Predators, no cup, but competitive. Basically, as soon as Barry Trotz got there, they were a highly competitive team. Made a Stanley Cup final, didn't win one, but even now they're still set up to be a very, very good team going forward. So I think the Nashville Predators have been a very competitive team. Winnipeg Jets, they get a brutal when looking at it, especially if you factor in the Atlanta Thrashers of it. They made the playoffs one time in 13 years. And even Winnipeg, although, yeah, it's a tough market to win in, they have not had a ton of resounding success outside of that 2018 Western Conference Finals run. That's like the peak of the franchise. So I think you got to have them in brutal. If we include Utah, I'm not going to really include the other two because it's just like kind of unfair. Seattle's been around for three full seasons. Vegas, you can put them in cup slash competitive, but should, should they be ahead of these teams? Probably not. But if you include Arizona for Utah, they're definitely in the bottom. I'm going to move uh, the Buffalo Sabres up, though, because I don't think that they're really on the same level of these teams once you factor in their prior history of guys like Hashik, guys like Perot. So this is it. This is the final. Let me know in the comments. What do you think about it? I'll be seeing you in the next one.